Texas Sheriff's Department is looking to increase bike patrols in Rancho Palos Verdes along Western Avenue. RPV TV caught up with Sergeant Dave Rosas, who tells us how the bicycle patrol has been successful in preventing crime. The whole bike patrol is to increase visibility here on Western Avenue. Bike patrol gives us greater visibility and enhances our uh, enforcement ability. And people uh, don't see us coming, and they kind of get surprised when they uh, were right on top of them right away. Uh, we look for, uh, we've had uh, a few bur car burglaries behind uh, LA Fitness. Uh, basically, people uh, leave their purses and GPSs and whatever else on the front seat. Uh, there's no visibility back there. There's uh, no cameras, so basically everybody, uh, it's free pickings. People just start burglarizing the uh, cars. So if we increase the patrols, uh, the bad guys will see us and they won't be uh, coming around. We are issuing tickets. We will issue parking tickets for the handicap, which is a hefty fine. So don't park in the handicap spots. Uh, we'll tag abandoned cars. We'll uh, respond to backup calls for some of the deputies if they have a call for service. We usually start uh, near the Carl's Juniors on Western Avenue, ride southbound, uh, do a couple laps, and then we'll really start getting into it. We'll start talking to people. A lot of the businesses we'll go into and talk to the businesses, see if they have any problems. Uh, marshals have had a few uh, petty thefts, so uh, we parked the car up here as a deterrent and uh, make this our home base. We'd like a, a, a more presence on Western Avenue, and I think this is one of the tax bases for the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, and we want to make it safe for the people to come up here and, and shop and, and, you know, put their money into RPV. A lot of the deputies and myself live in the Rancho Palos Verdes area, and, and we shop and, and play here, and uh, we want it to be a safe area. Our kids come here, and... Uh, we demand it to be safe. Cancer survivors and the community will come together at the second annual Relay for Life. The event benefits the American Cancer Society. It takes place May 3rd and 4th at the Miralest Intermediate School. Liz Brown Swanson joins us from the school with the details. Liz. Maria, the Relay for Life is part of a worldwide movement in the fight against cancer. The event taking place right here at Merrillless Intermediate School on May 3rd and 4th will happen on the field behind me as the community comes together, cancer patients, survivors, their loved ones, caregivers, and friends all to raise awareness and money to prevent cancer and find a cure. Now the event is 24 hours as a reminder that cancer never sleeps. First and foremost, we want to be able to educate the community um, on cancer prevention, ways that they can stay healthy um, and get testing early. That's always the best thing to do. Early detection really helps. But then we also are here to celebrate our cancer survivors. Um, we have a great opening lap with them and an opening ceremony where we ask our, we invite our cancer survivors to come out and let us celebrate them and their cancer journey along with their caregivers. A lot of the money that we fundraise for comes back into the Palos Verdes community where we can help those cancer patients that are currently going through treatment. We can get them rides to their treatment centers, help um, those women. Um, we have a Look Good Feel Better program, so if they lose their hair and they need a new wig, um, they need help with um, their skin care and things like that, we're able to help them. So far we have about uh, probably about 12 teams lined up with different groups, um, including a team from one of the elementary schools and a team from here and um, some other sports teams. So we're very excited to have some extra groups this year along with some of the other groups that we've had in the past. Um, and one of the most important group of people that we have that come that may not be part of a group that, but show up are the survivors. And we really treasure their coming to this because it gives them inspiration and makes them feel very happy that they actually have survived cancer. So that's one of the first things that happens with the event. For all of you that come to Relay for Life, you are going to meet this amazing sixth grade student here at Merrill Less Intermediate. Well, after my first night at the hospital, I guess I just, it was cancer. I remember lying down. I have those tubes on my nose. I hate those. Um, um, and then my mom came in. I couldn't see her because my eyes were closed and I kept saying, no, 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 thank you. <laughs> I tried, I, it was, I wanted my mom so bad. And she came in and I think you might have been entertaining the surgeons. I think you have that kind of spirit. But you actually had a brain tumor, right? Yeah, I did. I did. Um, and what were the signs? How did you know something was wrong? Well, I didn't know anything was wrong. My mom and dad did. They noticed that my feet were off. So you, um, you were walking funny? Yeah. 
and then I I remember having a huge knot at the back of my head the next day. I was on the sixth floor and I remember throwing up Trophy's Jello. <laughs> so we won't be serving you Jello at Relay for Life. Well, I can eat strawberry Jello now. I couldn't take it then. <laughs> The organizers of the second annual Relay for Life right here at Maryless Intermediate is hoping the community will all come together and make this event a huge success. Right now, cancer does remain the second leading cause of death in this country, and it is hopeful that with events like this, we'll find a cure. Now, for more information, you can log on to RelayForLife.org slash CA. Cancer Survivor! Former RPV mayor and cancer survivor Larry Clark is expected to join the many survivors taking part in the 24-hour Relay for Life. And when we come back, you could say it was a real circus over at the Palos Verdes Library, and you just might learn a thing or two about nature at a movie premiere at the Warner Grand. Don't you go away. Hi there, I'm Dee Dee Daniels, and I've been a personal trainer for almost three decades. Please join me on Peninsula Fitness, a 30-minute daily workout to get yourself moving. Sometimes we're seated, sometimes not, sometimes we're calm and relaxed, and sometimes the workout is high energy. Be sure to tune in every day to see what we're up to. All the workouts are safe and effective, and best of all, I can be your personal trainer right in your home. Not only do you work out with me, but sometimes my colleagues join us in the studio and we do a specialty workout like Christine here who's taking me through some kickboxing moves. Don't worry, that kick was not part of the show. So join me, Dee Dee Daniels, every day on Peninsula Fitness, and let's get moving. I'll see you soon. Hi, I'm Deputy Chris Knox, here to remind you of the importance of traffic safety near our schools. School zones are always 25 miles per hour. The school zone only applies when students are outside the school in the morning and the afternoon. Parents should always allow extra time when dropping off their children and should know the school's drop-off routes and procedures. Motorists should also focus on safe driving near schools. Some of the violations I see near schools are cell phones, speeding, double parking, seat belts, and child safety seats. Students should always remember to cross safely at intersections and not to run out in front of cars. When we follow these rules, we can all stay safe. The Palos Verdes Land Conservancy had a special night at the Warner Grand Theater where they kicked off the Beauty and Nature film series. Throughout the next few months, the Conservancy will share a collection of films that will help you learn more about our environment and the beauty of nature. The first film was called Yosemite, A Gathering of Spirit. Here with more is Jessica McKay. Hi, we're here at the beautiful and historic Warner Grand Theater where the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy is celebrating its 25th anniversary as well as 105th anniversary of Yosemite Valley by showing the documentary Yosemite by Ken Burns. Today we just screened the movie Yosemite, A Gathering of Spirit, which was arranged as a celebration for the 150th anniversary of Yosemite National Park. and. Um, we're culminating our 25th anniversary for the Land Conservancy, so we thought by combining the two um, entities into one big celebration and having it in a historic theater would be a really fun way to go. Well, we're here in the beautiful Warner Grand Theater to watch the very first film presented by the Land Conservancy with a variety of community partners, including the Grand Vision Foundation that operates the theater here. And this is an opportunity for the Land Conservancy to spread its message to a new audience. We've in the past used a variety of strategies. We have monthly nature walks, uh, we, we have lectures once in a while, and we do programs in, in schools in the community. And we're always looking for new ways to reach new audiences and alert them to our message and our priorities. We feel that people need access to open space and that people really enjoy it when they have an opportunity to take advantage of open spaces and wildlife and in addition to just preserving open space we also invest considerable resources our time 
into habitat restoration? Well, I personally am a huge classic movie fan. So to me, like the Warner Grand is just, it's one of those movie palaces that is so beautiful and so important to preserve. So I love the parallels between the preservation of this unique piece of architecture and the preservation of our natural uh, environment. So I think it's perfect and I, I'm so happy to be here. Well, you know, the, the Palos Verdes Land Conservancy is so um, important and they have the same vision uh, that we saw when we just saw this documentary, this film, about the, the people who saw the vision of preserving Yosemite for the whole public, not just for the wealthy. And the Palos Verdes Land Conservancy, with their preservation of White Point Nature Preserve, is a great example of really preserving 102 acres of open space for everyone to uh, enjoy, for school children, uh, for people taking walks. It, it's just amazing that we have 102 acres of open space in Los Angeles. That just doesn't happen, and it was their vision uh, and their hard work that made that happen. You know, we're very proud as a city to um, have the preserve in Rancho Palos Verdes. We, we welcome the guests. Um, we have very dedicated staff that work very, very hard in conjunction with uh, the Conservancy staff to make the preserve what it is and improve it and protect it going forward hopefully into perpetuity long in the future. So. I thought the film was outstanding. I really enjoyed uh, the the intro and my understanding that's a five minute snippet of a much longer uh, piece that's been put together through RPV TV and Mark uh, Dottie uh, uh, with many many people that were responsible for the creation of the Conservancy and what we have going on now but the actual film itself, I had four very young girls with me. Uh, I found the film very, very interesting, as did the girls. And uh, I knew uh, Theodore Roosevelt was one of our finer cons conservation presidents, but uh, I didn't know to what extent he had gotten involved. So I found it very, very uh, inspirational and informative. And also tonight will be a short film before the documentary by RPV TV about the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy. Well, it's always great when RPV TV can work with some of our local nonprofits, and you don't get any more local than the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy. It's in their name, Palos Verdes and Peninsula, right there. And it was really great to work with this team and be able to put together a piece that recorded some of the founders' memories and some of the people that have been with the Land Conservancy for a long time, and they know some of the history and the stories, like how White Point was founded and then fixed up and is now a great place that you can go. And I found it really exciting to be able to um, actually to be able to shoot some of these places in the Land Conservancy to take photos and to take video um, in a way that we really haven't been able to do before. Uh, so, you know, usually we kind of get in and out with our news stories, but for this one, we are really able to concentrate on making a great product. And I think we should all be really proud of what we are able to do at RPV TV. And if you'd like more information on the Land Conservancy, you can go to PVP lc.org. Back to you, Maria. The next film in the series is called Riding Giants on June the 14th. For more information, you can go to the website at pvplc.org. And the annual Malaga Cove Art Show has begun. The lawn show features local artists and is sponsored by the Palos Verdes Art Center. The show features wearable art, beautiful unique paintings, and ceramics. Here is more from one of the ceramicists, Jan Napolitan. Hi, I'm Jan Napolitan and we're at the Malaga Cove Plaza in Palos Verdes Estates. And Artists from the Palos Verdes Art Center are having one of their six shows that we're having this season. It is uh, seven artist groups. Uh, those who are interested come to Malaga Cove Plaza and Palos Verdes Estates once a month during the summer. So we show from April through September. This show is, uh, has been going on for, at li well, nearly 60 years or over 60 years. We're not quite sure. We don't have that history. And it started out as a parasol show. I'm a ceramic artist. I started uh, uh, classes, ceramic classes, 40 years ago at 
uh, when it was the Palos Verdes Community Arts Association, before we even had our art center up at Crest Ridge in Crenshaw. So uh, it's all high fire stoneware and uh, goes in the oven and microwave and dishwasher and uh, is all lead free. Uh, Bernard Fallon, I'm a, a, a landscape and still life artist and I do a lot of uh, local scenes here in the South Bay and around the peninsula. Uh, this is the, uh, the Coast Guard's lawn at Point Vicente and um, this is a kind of, uh, this is actually a plain air piece. I, I, I hold my equipment up here three or four times. Uh, the one on the left here is a view looking down on the Wayfarer's Chapel uh, around Portuguese Bend. And here's a, another plain air piece done at night of Tony's on the Pier. Uh, one of my favorites, this one. And uh, over here we have um, the archway leading into Malaga Cove Plaza. Uh, a lot of people are very familiar with this. In fact, it's actually over there. You can see the archway, but I was on the other side of it. My name is Nancy Comelford, and I'm a jewelry artist, and I consider my pieces wearable art. Uh, on this particular table, I have this beautiful piece, which is amethyst. Uh, this is a freshwater pearl, just a beautiful shaped one, along with this also pearl. You can see the difference in the shapes. This, of course, is an abalone piece, and you really can't improve on nature sometimes. Uh, we're from Redondo Beach, so just a couple miles down the hill on PCH. We like looking at all the local art. Um, it's all, you know, all different styles, but all pretty similar in terms of, uh, you know, a lot of beach stuff and a lot of LA focused art, which is cool for us. The event is held from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on various weekends from April through September. For more information, you can go to the PV Arts Center website at pvartscenter.org. And it was a big night under the big top as the Palos Verdes Peninsula Library District celebrated their annual gala event. This year, the library was transformed into a circus, complete with circus animals, clowns, and even a strongman. There was food from local restaurants and great music from the Norse Theater. Here with more is Jessica McKay. Hi, I'm Jessica McKay, and we're here at the Palos Verdes Library where there's an Under the Big Top fundraiser going on right now, presented by the Friends of the Library. Let's go check it out. I always go to this event each year because it's a big fundraiser. It's, a, it's an important event for uh, their, their donors and, and their supporters. And one of the, the key roles, I think, that I can play on the City Council and Rancho Palos Verdes is, is to help our other fellow agencies that are so interconnected with making our community a better place to live, be successful. That's the library district. I come to this event every single year. Uh, it's uh, it's an interesting event because it's not one of these typical big sit down around tables and and, and eat dinner and and long speeches. This is a very social, uh, uh, dynamic uh, event, and it's held right here inside the main uh, library. So it, it always gets a great turnout. I always make a point of uh, of coming here each year and. and try to support uh, the library district. Francine and I have chaired the event here for the last three or four years and we made a hundred thousand dollars for the library and for the events that we've done here. In the last two years? The last two years. That's very very impressive sir. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about this event tonight? Well we had to have a new theme so we chose under the big top a circus theme this year. And that's why everybody's dressed up as circus clowns and circus acts, whatever. And I'm dressed up as a lion tamer. Events like this and all of the work, actually, that the Friends of the Library do is really, really important. 
the, the friends are our primary fundraising arm and through this event and the book sales and the library shop and the, the donations that people give them and the memberships, they raise money that really helps us supplement our services. So they give us about $300,000 a year towards library operations and they also provide funding for a lot of special projects like uh, we're restoring our Malaga Cove library, uh, we remodeled our Mira Less library, all of that funding or most of that funding has come from the friends. So it's really important to us. The first time we tried to have a party just on this floor here, uh, it took us, uh, we had to close for two days. Uh, it took us one full day just to get everything moved away, and then we could start decorating and doing all those things. Uh, over the years, we put everything on wheels so we can move it away quickly and uh, put it back quickly. And so everything that you see around here was done since this morning. All the furniture was delivered, all the sets were built today. And we're going to put on this party tonight, and when it's over, it all goes away, and we'll be open again tomorrow at 1, and uh, we won't miss a lick. I've had a magical and exciting night here under the big top at the Palos Verdes Library. I hope you join the next year for the gala. I'm Jessica McKay. Back to you, Maria. And in sports, when coach John Hangardner took over as head coach at the Peninsula Panther baseball team in 2012, he decided to assemble a coaching staff that would help his players get to the next level. He also decided to add a couple of coaches to his staff who had real life baseball experience in the major leagues. Coach Brian Bowles played for the Toronto Blue Jays and coach Don Slott played for seven major league teams, including the Angels. So is this staff of pros paying off? Well, with a record of 13 and two, it just might be. We have done really well. We're 13 and two, um, and our players have transitioned from a situation where they kind of expected things to happen, but now they've earned those things that are happening to them as far as the amount of time and effort that they put into practice. Um, it's spell wins for us in games and uh, they've just done a great job as far as working hard becoming good teammates and uh, that's everything that we're kind of looking for at this program is to transition into a really good program where guys learn from the very beginning it's about all about the team first and hard work and that's where we're really starting to achieve here I think you know there's a lot on the line as far as guys ability to go on from here and play baseball in college and so you know it's not just fun and games anymore now it's serious and guys want to see uh, each other do well therefore then then scouts come and you know whether it be pro or college scouts and so you know that's what we're trying to get to is get our guys to the next level and if we can do that then we've we've achieved our goal and that's to, to get everybody to play their best their ability and then move on at this level what are the kind of things that you see and you go he's really good um, I don't know I guess you just see it you know whether it be the, the quickness of their their feet or the, the strength of their arm their ability to hit tough pitches so um, and that all comes with hard work. I mean, it's, it's, it's guys who put in the time and the effort, and that's what these guys are doing. Most of these guys are always practicing after practice or before practice. They're hitting with Coach Slot. I mean, Don has been a huge factor in our success when it comes to hitting. And they just work on the finer things as far as hitting, and, and his instruction has helped us tremendously. So those are the types of things we're trying to accomplish here. Well, I didn't know that I was going to be a coach after I retired. Uh, you know, I came back. My old high school coach was still here. He asked me to come out, and I kind of fell in love with... Uh, trying to help kids uh, uh, improve. It's, it's about not how good you are at this point, it's how good you're gonna be. And if you continue to find a way to get better, um, a lot of these guys can go on and play at the next level. Our expectations are to go out and win every game. You know, we, we play to win, but you know, the whole, the whole idea is, is really to, to every day, just win, win every day, you know, and that, that starts with every drill, you know, every throw, we try to make the, uh, you know, tell the kids that, you know, every throw, every swing, you're either getting better or you're getting worse. And so it's about a process-oriented approach where the kids are, you know, really working on the fundamental aspects. So when you get to the game, it's just, you know, hopefully that translates and carries over. You also mentioned the element of fun, which is important to remember as well. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're not having fun, then why even be out here? So we want them to take it seriously. But at the same time, you know, don't, don't be so hard on yourself if you make a mistake that you just bury yourself. And, and guys have to learn to let it go and just try and do better on the next pitch or the next at bat or, you know, whatever the this, this situation may come.
Good advice indeed. And if you want to see more from the Peninsula High baseball team, you can see their story on an upcoming episode of Playing the Field. And finally, after a weather-related postponement, the annual Well of a Day event was a celebrated success. Everyone in the community came out to enjoy the festivities, and there was a special gift that was unveiled from the Palos Fruities Rotary Club for everyone in the community to enjoy. Here's more from the event. Well, these are fabulous binoculars. They're the traditional uh, public binoculars and telescopes you see around all the great sightseeing areas in the world. The idea for the binoculars came about as we were just talking about as we always do at our foundation, we're looking to do things with, within the community. Uh, we do a lot of scholarships, uh, we do a lot of uh, things down at the Boys and Girls Club off the hill, but we hadn't done anything for a very long time for the public community on the hill. And uh, this came to mind that uh, uh, with all the whale watching here, if somebody shows up and they don't happen to have a set of binoculars, they're out of luck. So we decided with all the space they had out on this back patio here, that it would be a perfect place to add some public binoculars. What's been the best part or the best thing about Well of a Day? Um, spending time with each other. Okay. Um, probably the kettle corn. <laughs> okay, I love that. <laughs> it was really cool, like going to the booths and like seeing everything that you can learn and like do the arts and crafts and stuff. It just takes a whole community of people who enjoy working with this environment and people who love the peninsula and love whales. That's all it takes. And that's the best part about it because we have many organizations here. Some love manatees, some love whales, some love saving pinnipeds and seals and whatnot. But you know, the bottom line is everybody is here because they love the peninsula and they love the environment and that's what makes this organization and this event in particular just just a boot. What's the best part about Whale of a Day so far today? Um, I think like you could just go around and hang out with your friends and family. Okay. Um, probably seeing all the booths and like getting to spend time with people that you know. Okay. How about for you? Yeah, it's kind of the same what Anna said. I like the booths and like learn about whales. Okay. We really want to share our beautiful peninsula here because it just doesn't get any better than this view up here. We're so lucky. And you are so right about that. That view is quite amazing. And that will do it for us. From everyone here at RPV TV, make it a great day.